Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And in this particular video, I want us to do a critical analysis about the return of Peter Munya into Kenyan politics. Peter Munya was a close ally of Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. And yesterday, Peter Munya made his return to Kenyan politics. Milking us, putting money in certain places where we know in the name of providing health care for the citizenry. Wasifikiria tujui, tunajua na tunaona. Sasa wameendelea wanasema sasa ukiwa na kuku utalipa ushuru. Watakuja kuhesabu kuku kwako nyumbani. Vifaranga ngapi umepata njana? Atitoa 50 shillings kwa kifaranga moja. Ngombe ngapi imesaliwa? Which calf gapi kwako? Sasa that's why I said what we are driving at now is a, a wash wash economy. And the Kiongozi Bwana Wandai, watch and kueleze. Taxes, taxing the agricultural products is a preserve of the counting governments. Why in the wasome katiba ya Kenya? Vizuri. So we come and mawakili wa mekosa ama ninini. Agricultural produce cannot be taxed by the national government unless there's value added products when they have been processed. If you process them, they become something else you have added value. Then you can tax VAT. But raw agricultural products, it's only the county government that is supposed to tax through what it is it calls says. And the single business license that they also charge for those who are selling those things wherever. And what you pay at the market level. Now the national government attacks everything else. It is not raising enough money for its, its wash wash programs. <laughs> and how will the return of Peter Munya change the political matrix for William Samoy Araputo? That's exactly what I want us to do in this video. Because if you follow the politics of this country very closely, Peter Munya was a very powerful cabinet secretary in the Republic of Kenya. And at some point he was accused of being part of the Lamada gang. I have a mention to them and I'm surprised they did not depon that I have a video of the meetings at Lamada Hotel Basement. Which is And the of the case. Yeah, I'm just saying that uh, if you honor with your assistance, I would want to play because it would assist the all of these things they are trying to investigate. The video of the meetings because it would prove that a member of uh, a member who works for my bosses has actually threatened the life of the deputy president. It is because they're saying I'm not cooperating with the evidence. I have evidence and I am choosing to play it in court. Your honor, I however would want to say for me to play the court, I would request that I don't just play to the DCI because they seem disinterested in seeing the truth and want a version of their truth and instead to play the video in camera because I don't want a spectacle like they have cost a spectacle in camera but in the attendance of the court. But if the DCI chooses to play it in public, I am more than willing because it is factual, true and I am known for system your facts. That is all your honor. We have made it clear that at no time have we ever met anywhere not just in Lamanda or anywhere else, to plan to kill the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya or, else, or any other person for that matter. And uh, for, to avoid the speculations, we want to confirm we've been having meetings. Indeed, we had a meeting in Lamanda. And we'll continue having meetings because under the Constitution of Kenya, there is a freedom of association and a freedom of expression. People are allowed to meet as long as they are not meeting to plan any criminal activities. You can't call a meeting of, because it's not just covering the secretary, so many people, mm -hmm. almost probably 40 people, mm -hmm. call it a secret, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a secret is, you know, where one or two people are hiding somewhere for the people uh, can be a secret. And ahead of the 2022 presidential election, Raila Odinga named Peter Munya 
as a cabinet secretary way before the election. Honorable Peter Munya, as cabinet secretary for agriculture and chairman of the Kenya productive sector. I repeat, cabinet secretary for agriculture and chairman of Kenya productive sector. And the biggest question is, will his return affect the political equation for William Samoy Araputo? Before we get into all those, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. But before I dive in, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to thank the following people. You are seeing their names on the screen there for the coffee which they sent to me earlier today. You can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on the screen. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, what political implication will the return of Peter Munya have in Kenyan politics? That is the biggest question. Because yesterday, Peter Munya announced his return in style. Nataka kusema, kutoka hapa, wikingine mbili, next week, towards the end of the next week, tutakuwa meru. Nataka kuansa kufungua ofisi meru, ya branch ya meru, na recruitment. It is already kicked up, imeansa leo. I laughed after that, tutakuwa muranga. Tukona program, I'm announcing the first two stopovers. Tunansa Meru. The other weekend, not this one. I love after that. Takua Moranga. After that, to announce the other destinations. But that's where we are starting. We want to move. He Shinda Kenya it and go just is to kika to kiongan to keep young gum so too. Lasima to sike na to onekane. Na tugunuse na wananchi. Wameansa kuelewa, tuwaeleze saindi, tuweze kuenda mbele. Kwa hivyo nataka sasa. First of all, who is Peter Munya? Peter Munya is a former member of parliament for Tigania East. He was elected in 2002. Of course, he ended up being appointed as assistant minister. In 2007, Peter Munya was re-elected again. In 2013, Peter Munya decided to contest for the gubernatorial seat after the promulgation of a new constitution and he became the first governor for Meru. In 2017, Peter Munya lost his seat to Kiraitu Murungi. The truth of the matter is that Peter Munya believed that he was rigged out. And those who understand the politics of the Republic of Kenya, there's a strong feeling that William Ruto ensured that Peter Munya, who was going for his second term and was ambitious, William Ruto ensured that he was not re-elected. Peter Munya went to the Supreme I mean, went to courts but Uru Kenyatta pleaded with him, and that's how in 2018, he ended up being a cabinet secretary. But how will his return into Kenyan politics affect William Samoy Araputo? Number one, in my view, is that Azimio has always lacked a strong person to take William Ruto head on in Mount Kenya. Peter Munya is that guy. After the last election, we all remember that most of uh, Raila Odinga's allies, those who are very powerful, people like Joho, people like Ngilu, people like Junet, people like uh, Matiangi, people like Atuli, all took political uh, leave, apart from Atuli, who joined Kenya Kwanza. So William Ruto has always had field day in Mount Kenya. Martha Karwa has failed to manage to fight William Ruto. I want to reveal you, to you something which you don't know. Do you know why... Ruto appointed uh, Rigati Kashagwa as his running mate. The idea was simple. Ruto needed someone who could fight Uhuru Kenyatta. Professor Kithuri Kindiki could not. Moses Kuria was not being taken seriously. Who else? All those other guys could not. It's, it was only Rigati Kashagwa who would take Uhuru Kenyatta head on. That kind of a person is what Uhuru Kenyatta lacked. Someone who would take William Ruto head on. Now with the return of Peter Munya into Kenyan politics, and based on the tone of his yesterday's speech, I can guarantee you that William Ruto is not going to have it easy in Mount Kenya. So that's the first reason why I think William Ruto should be worried. Number two, Peter Munya can easily lock Mount Kenya East. That is uh, Meru, 
embu and Tarakanidi. They have a total of close to 1.4 million votes. The, the truth of the matter is that without Mount Kenya, William Ruto is a nobody. Mount Kenya gave Ruto the highest number of votes. But the mountain is currently rebelling against Ruto. But where are they going to? If you look at the IBC figures of 2022, the last election, you'll realize that Peter Munya almost succeeded. There are polling stations in Meru County where, if you look at the numbers, Rani Odinga actually defeated Ruto. That cannot be said of, of Martha Karoa. Martha Karoa was defeated even in her own polling station in Gishugu. Peter Munya delivered. And if you, if you look at the way even the Mount, Mount Kenya voted, Mount Kenya East kind of voted with Azimio to some extent. At least they have several members of parliament, several MCAs. In fact, in uh, Meru County, I think several MCAs were elected on Azimio affiliated parties. So that's the fact. So which means Peter Munya, if for example he was appointed as Raila Odinga's running mate in the last election, and I've always believed that Raila Odinga committed a mistake of appointing Martha Karo. Martha Karo was not the right candidate for running mate. I, I strongly believe. Of course, Raila Odinga was informed by other factors like the women votes, you know, the reform credential, but Raila needed the mountain votes. Martha Karoa did not deliver. Peter Munya would have delivered Mount Kenya East. Assuming if the fact that he was not a presidential candidate, he was just going to be another minister, he was able to deliver a, a few MCS MPs. What of if what if Peter Munya was a running mate, Raila Odinga's running mate? Mount Kenya East would have been sealed. So he has that ability. Number three, <laughs> the return of Peter Munya is also coming at a time when there is the clamor for Mount Kenya-based political party. Peter Munya is coming with a party which is associated with Mount Kenya. PNU. PNU is associated with Mwai Kibaki. Remember when, when Raleigh Odinga was fighting with Kibaki, Kibaki was running under PNU. That is the party Peter Munya is coming with. Most Mount Kenya people voted for that particular party. So it's bringing the memory of Mwai Kibaki. And the fact that it's coming at a time when there's the need. Elected leaders, elected UDA leaders are regretting why they never went into the, into the agreement with their own political party. So, which means Peter Munya with his PNU, if well packaged, if well campaigned for, can easily win the support of the mountain. The mountain really wants their political party, their own. So that if they go for an, an election in the next election, even if they will not have a, uh, the presidency, even if they will have the running mate, but at least they will be having people elected on their party ticket. That will enable them to bargain. So for me, if you ask me, I believe that Peter Munya can easily position PNU as Mount Kenya-based political party because there's that clamor. The other day you saw Rigati Gashagwa's own senator Demanding for their own political party. <laughs> Number four. Currently, and I've, I've talked about this. I think there is a strategy by Azimio to sponsor someone as a presidential candidate from Mount Kenya. In short, in 2027, Mount Kenya will produce a presidential candidate. I'm looking at Munya and I see that presidential candidate. The idea behind that is that that presidential candidate, because you know, the other day you, you had uh, by your own ears uh, Jeremiah Kioni complaining that there are people who are leaving Kenya Kwanza from Mountain and there are, there are quite a number, but they're not joining as a meal. So the question is, where were they going to? That's where this party belonging to Munya now comes in. And Munya being a presidential candidate would mean that a huge percentage of, of Mount Kenya would vote for, for him. So for Ruto, any loss in Mount Kenya is a huge blow for him. For El Odinga, I don't think that's the case. As long as they can have kind of uh, some political arrangement with whoever, then they'll be okay. 
And lastly, and this is something we should worry root of. Currently, there's serious rebellion against Kenya Kwanza in Mount Kenya. The implication is that those guys are rebelling against Ruto. If they find a place where they feel at home, they will easily join that place. So, Munya is taking advantage of that. The truth is, Martha Karo has tried with Kamwene. I don't think it's working. Jubilee is not really selling down there. So, I'm seeing Peter Munya taking an advantage of that rebellion and with the support is receiving, receiving from Uru Kenyatta because the truth is Uru Kenyatta is also gaining ground in Mount Kenya. If you will get just a proper endorsement of Uru Kenyatta, I think Peter Munya will give Ruto serious political headache. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.